welcome to the New Rugged Order Podcast, exclusively on the Hard Knock Digital Culture Channel. Now give it up to your host people, MM2K. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? Uh Uh-oh, uh-oh. We don't want to do that. We won't do that again. We won't need that again. Y'all know the deal. NRO Podcast, everybody. What is going on? It is your boy, MM2K, back again with another podcast for 2020. I know I wasn't on my game 2019 or the end of 2019. I know there was a lot of stuff going on, and, you know, I was very infrequent. You know, one moment I was here every day and the next moment I wasn't, but 2020 is going to be better. That was just all the setup for 2019. So I hope everybody is having a great 2020. I hope everybody is enjoying the new year. Um, There's been a lot of news and gaming going on so far. You know what I'm saying? A lot of crazy stuff happening. And, um, you know, it's like, it, it's like we one moment went from, and that's how it is sometimes. We one moment went from grasping at straws, trying to find the latest news to not being able to control, <laughs> you know, how we're able to broadcast it. And, and I speak particularly as someone that's, you know, now regularly putting stuff on, uh, uh, webcast, I mean, websites and stuff like that. You know, we have the broadband bully site, um, that's up and running here. I'm going to show y'all right here. There you go. Broadband bully site. We've been throwing out a lot of great news on there. As a matter of fact, let's see if I can refresh this, if this will work. It's for some reason, it's a give and miss with your boy. Okay. So it's not working right now, but what it's supposed to do is on this right hand side where it says the triple B on Twitch. Supposed to send you to my, uh, <laughs> supposed to send you to my stream, you know, but we know we're live. We are live. Definitely. So that's all right. That is a okay. We got a lot of stuff to talk about anyway. And then you can either reach us via hndc.live if you want to catch our broadcast live, or you can go to twitch.tv forward slash mighty most 2000 to get access to our latest podcast. Holsey 22, yeah, what is going on, my friend? What is going on? Glad to see you. Man, a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot of stuff to cover. Can y'all hear me all right? If y'all can't, let me know. What's good, brother? I, You know, just just a lot of hard work, man. Just a lot of hard work. I'm, I'm, I'm dedicated back to the platform, and this platform being... Uh, Twitch, so you will see content here on a regular basis from here on out, man. So back to back NRO podcast, you're gonna have streams, all that good stuff, right? Um, we got something good lined up tomorrow as well, as far as streams are concerned. Just want to do something here, okay? Or something so I can make sure that I got all my information in front of me. Okay, so here's where we're at, people. Um, as we let the chat fill up, and I apologize for the minute. We were we were getting better. We were only late a minute. You know what I'm saying? I'm good, Holsey. I'm good, brother. I I hope you're enjoying your 2020. You know what I'm saying? With all this beautiful bean footage, (laughs) as far as gaming is concerned, all this wonderful goodness. Um, I just want to say this, man. That um, there's a lot that is going to tell the tale of gaming happening right now. What do I mean by that? Cause people, excuse me, just throwing words together and they don't mean anything, but you just, you got, look, you gotta, you gotta look deeper than just the surface. There's a lot of stuff happening, man. We got cloud gaming, which I know everybody's not a fan of. We got these new consoles coming out and then we got to fight for mind share. That's different from anything that we've ever seen before. You just, you, you haven't seen anything like it. Um, where both companies now don't seem to be on the attack like they normally would be, you know? And we're going to talk about how we feel about that, how that's affecting gaming overall. And then, of course, you know, we're going to start it off by talking about what's causing this discussion. Um, E3. 
our good friend at uh, Jim Ryan, a uh, good friend at PlayStation, Jim Ryan and company. They're, they're, they've decided not to show up to E3. What's up with that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that kind of knocked the wind out of a lot of people. So we're going to talk about that. And then lastly, there's this Microsoft interview with Survivor um, that's out there. I got it up on the screen. We're going to go over that. I want to talk about what this interview means because a lot of people, I have a lot of people in the Xbox camp that were like, oh man, this is great. Hold, you know, Phil's talking to Bibble Watson, the gigahertz again, and this is going to be fantastic. And no, I, 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 I didn't look at it that way. Sorry, I'm getting we're getting a lot of stutter. And he says, Sony is savage, Holsey says, for pulling out of E3. Oh, man. I don't know if savage is the right word, my brother. <laughs> and because of the the massive participation that we got uh via last show, we're definitely going to have um we're definitely going to have let me do this to make sure that I got everything up and running. We're definitely going to have um, live calls today. And before we get started, in, in, in relation to that, I know I've been talking to people behind the scenes, right? And I know a lot of people feel, may feel some type of way, and I'm not going to name any names, you know, because these are all great discussions. Feel some type of way like MM2K, why, why is the live calls? Now, why are you requiring this? And That's what we liked about this platform that you're not, you know, you're not e-begging and I, I'm not e-begging at all. You know, I'm going to continue to do the shows regardless if I get a penny or not. But what you guys got to understand is that like the cloud gaming testing that I did where I was telling y'all the truth, like, let's take Stadia out of it. Where I was telling y'all the truth, that project X cloud wasn't what they was trying to, what, what wasn't what it was all chalked up to be. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't the full game that they was trying to make it, make it seem like. And it was people like myself that because of the user testing that I was doing that put pressure on others to finally come out and be honest. Oh, Microsoft is aware of the latency issues, but they're aiming for something bigger. Devin got the box. What's going on? You know what I'm saying? So, and he says, Sony is trash, 100 million PS4s and still broke. <laughs> We're going we to talk about the reason he's alluding to them not being at PlayStation. I mean, at, at E3. So we have that whole dynamic, right? And and because of I was able to do the cloud gaming thing, I was able to test that out for you guys. Um, then there's the live calls. A lot of this, and this stuff, you know, isn't free, unfortunately. So, you know what I mean? So we get, there's, there's got to be a baseline where we say we want to continue to do the utmost that we can but we can't bleed ourselves dry in the process. You know what I mean? So initiatives like, Hey, let's all make this cyclical. You know, I'll continue to do the things that I can do, but Hey, we even got a free messaging app. You know, you can just go and show your support, whatever you got to say, go when it, when the night bot puts up the free app, click on it and just say what you got to say. We'll read it live on air. You know, just those little things will help keep those things going. So I just wanted to say that before we get started, you know what I'm saying? But big ups to Devin got the box joining the stream. All right. So, Here's what it is, people. Let's get right to it. There's no other way to say it but to say. It. Oh, before I get started, I do want to say, give a big uh, big shout out to my two subscribers. We got Cold Blood Sensei and we got Mr. Righteous Fish uh, mm, in the house, man. And also, if you have Twitch Prime, you can gift a subscription to the channel. It, it help, all that helps out a lot. All this stuff that I plug in here, it ain't, it ain't feeding my table. It ain't putting money on. You know what I'm saying? It just helps supplement and helps us bring bring you better content. Do in-depth research. You know what I'm saying? That was big, y'all. They were about to fly out of the chicken coop with that garbage. Oh, Project X Cloud runs excellent. And again, this ain't a dig for Microsoft because Microsoft never said that it ran excellent. It was these other publications that were upset with Google Stadia that we're trying to bloviate and make things look better than what it was. You know what I'm saying? And then Phil had to come out and was like, well, you know, streaming's only to supplement your call. And then you had the masses come out and say, well, Microsoft is, is um, aware of the latency change problems. There are a lot of people that like streaming, 
because it's comfortable for them. I know it's not the masses, and I know it's not the majority. We're going to talk about that deep, deep, deep in the show. We ain't going to get into that right now, because I know that's not what y'all really want to hear. But it just goes into the overall theme of today's show. There's a lot of people that like it because it's a good travel system. Big up to Velvet Lulu for following. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. All the support. It just, it just means so much. Um, so here's what happens, y'all. When you hear stuff like that, and I'm a gamer that travels, like a lot of people, you know, they like to game, but they, you know, they travel a lot. I have a friend that um, he loves, uh, what is that? Rift or Rise of the Ark. Damn. Where? He loves Ark. He loves Ark so much. That every and he goes from city to city to state to state. All the things always traveling. That what he does is when he goes to a new city or state, he goes to the local Best Buy, buys a rig, and returns it. Installs Ark on it, plays it, and returns it <laughs> when he's about to leave. Can you imagine if um? You know, he can get that same power, that same capability via just streaming, just booting up. You know what I'm saying? So for those people off the bat, that's going to have an immediate impact on them. Not the majority of us, but them. Just imagine if you're one of those people like my friend and you're like, oh, man, I hear all oh, this Project X Cloud is excellent. And here you get it in your hands and it's, and it's full and it's, and it's not there. He's buying a full rig. Is He's not just wanting to towed his laptop with him he's buying a full rig because he wants the full experience and a lot of these streaming platforms well, uh, some of them are giving you the full experience google stayed it being one of them and uh, uh, even kills 60 frames per second you know what i'm saying so we got to be honest out here and we can't be doing all this lying when we do all this lying we don't get anywhere um velvet lulu says trolls work in mysterious ways Devin got the box that he's resubbed i appreciate you brother thank you so much thank you all right let's get into it y'all Sony not being at E3 2020. I got to tell y'all. I got to keep it real. It's a bad thing. It's a bad thing. Now, before y'all jump out the chicken coop and y'all get all upset and y'all get all worked up, oh, is this a bad thing, MM2K? What the hell are you talking about? Just hear me out. Hear me out. Um, I get it that business-wise that you know what I'm saying? They might be able to save some coin. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I've seen some estimates where uh, I believe it was around. I want, I want to say, correct me if I'm wrong, if anybody got any additional links. But I've seen some estimates to where um, for like three days at E3, these companies play, pay around eight million dollars um, just to be at E3. Now, you may say, oh, yeah, well, it makes sense. But eight million dollars for outreach and for marketing is nothing and that's what e3 was originally it was it was a, it was a marketing um outlet excuse me where gamers could get together um ga i mean not gamers but game businesses could get together with wholesalers and market their uh market their goods now with the advent of the internet and how things are a lot more digital now people don't need e3 for that big push in the in, in you know right before the holiday season because if y'all remember e3 used to be like july august remember that a few years ago and then they changed it um and they pushed it back to june because they thought it would be more accommodating to people because they were on vacation so as e3 became less relevant in the um in in, in the wholesale world it became more of a showcase. And then the ESA that host E3 just said, well, why not just open it to the public? And not really kind of like threw things, you know, in a loop. Um, where a lot of news editors and people and stuff like that, people that provide a lot of gaming content, they said, I don't want to go. I just don't want to go. You know, and ESA's never, in, in the eyes of many, has never gotten a good hold on um, making it a, a, a hybrid um, news outlet along with a gaming outlet for uh, something, an interactive gaming outlet for gamers themselves, for the average gamer. They, they've never done a good job at that. Um, but it is bad. I'm sorry. It's bad because despite you saving those $8 million and despite E3 no longer being a necessity for you to, um, 
to in order for you to do that retail business or that wholesale business before the holiday season um it's 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 still bad for business in this sense that it's too risky to try to reach consumers at a console launch in a completely foreign format this is a console launch this isn't 2019 per se where sony may may not be on its best footing the hardcore gamer that is fine-tuned to pick up your product at launch, your new console at launch, is also fine-tuned to you presenting the big bang at E3. And without that big bang at E3, You're going against expectations and you run a big risk of tampering hype. I mean, don't get me wrong. Most people that are going to buy a new console at launch are going to buy a new console at launch regardless. But notice how I said most, not all. There are some people with a few extra dollars in their pocket who really enjoyed the last generation of console gaming that they had. And they said, oh, well, I'm loving my 360 and I got me a brand new TV. Let me go get an Xbox One. Or I love the PlayStation 3. Let me go get a PlayStation 4. Or, oh, my 360 looked great, but that PlayStation 4 looks banging. Got a couple extra dollars. You, we, run, we as hardcore gamers run across these type of people all the time. And honestly, be opposite of us who just live in our own bubble. They have the biggest impact and mind share because they're normally casuals themselves and they can speak the language of other casuals. So those people that may be more inclined to be on the fence that may break towards buying a new console. They know the, the, the big shebang is E3. Why is the big shebang E3? Because you're pinning your product versus the other choices that they're going to have. And when you side by side pin your, pin your product versus other ones and yours come out on top, it has a bigger impact. Period. There's no doubt about it. It's not just about showcasing your, your product. The hardcore that are going to buy PlayStation 5s or Xbox Series Xs at launch, there is nothing that's going to happen that's going to change their mind. They are ready to buy them now and come launch, say they're going to do that. But that's not everybody. Everybody doesn't operate. Everybody's not wired like that. Whether you think it's stupid or not, it just what is. I know them. You know them. People have been on the fence. I know plenty of people in the 360 era that were brand spanking new to gaming. Came in in the middle of the air, played Halo 3, Halo 4. This is great. I'm an Xbox. They go into the next generation. Now, PlayStation 4 looks nice, bro. And I don't even buy games at launch. A lot of these people I talk to personally, they always came to me for gaming news. I didn't buy a Xbox One at launch. I waited. Y'all know the story. I've told it a thousand times. I'm going to tell it again. Go check my prior content. Matter of fact, go check my last episode. I've been a real podcast. You'll, you'll hear my story then. But those people, but they used to come to me all the time, MM2K. What about this? What about that? I heard about this crisis game. Man, is that dope? What that, that, this time splitting, blah, blah, blah. And I'll be breaking it down to them. So I, to my shock, these people are now rev. They're now into it. They've been talking to me two, three years, doing their own research, reading their game informers, all that stuff. They don't need me anymore. They're hyped. Now comes the PlayStation 4. All the people that I used to tell them about 
that don't mess with PlayStation. Now they see them in that PlayStation, that infamous PlayStation 4 commercial like Todd Howard and whoever. Gabe Newell. This thing is powerful. They listen to us. They fed us the bread of life. <laughs> Took us to the fountain of youth. We can't separate ourselves from this product. Oh, they were like that. They saw that. Where did they see that? At various presentations, but most particularly where? E3. So to my surprise, a lot of these people came out and it was like MM2K. I got a PlayStation 4, bro. Oh, real? Really? Yeah. That PlayStation 4 Pro is, I mean, I'm not pro. That PlayStation 4 is banging. What's banging about it? Because I, I played it too. I really don't notice anything. Oh, no, man. No, no, no. They, they're, they're already psyched. They're convinced. They spent their $400. Ain't no getting them out of it. And it was more powerful, so it did look better. But in their mind, they blew it up even more because they were hyped and psyched. And a lot of those guys right now are the same people that you're seeing on Twitter that have evolved to full-fledged fanboys. But you see how it started? What was the fuse? That took that casual gamer and evolved them into a staunch warrior for your product. E3. There's nothing bigger in gaming than E3. Yes, you can have a unhold a separate um, conference to preach to the choir, but it's not E3. When you pin, again, this is not rocket science. When you pin your product, against other products. When people have choices to make, what am I going to spend my several hundred dollars on? And you blind it up and yours come out on top when yours rises above the surface. There's nothing like it, baby. I've heard comparisons. Well, Apple does their own shows, whatever. Those people are hardcore Apple fans and they're going to buy Apple phones regardless. It's different. This is gaming. It's different. Don't fall into that rabbit hole and use that comparison. There is nothing right now that has the impact of E3. Now, some of you are hearing this and you're like, MM2K, what about last year? Sony wasn't hurt last year, but oh, it hurt Sony. Even though I'll be the first to admit Xbox last year was dog. You know what? Fill in the blanks. That E3 was the worst. The worst E3 I've ever seen in my life. Period. Rage or not, what's going on, good brother? Good to see you here as always. Their conference was dog crap. And that's, a, that's a, 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 another point that I'm going to make too why we need a Sony there. So don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that by de facto, some de facto binary choice that Microsoft wins because no, of course, hell no. But by Sony not being there, not putting the grinding their gears and figuring out with the limited stuff that we have in 2019, how can we make ours look better? And keep up enthusiasm and hype for our products and services. Even though we're light, we're light on the feet right now. Instead of them figuring that out, they said, we're not showing up. And they didn't have steel to sharpen their steel. See, here's what E3 does sometimes. E3 works as a milestone creator. It gives you an honest look at your product. It pins your product against your competitors. And it really is a truth teller. Mirror, mirror on the wall. And if you if you can't at least put up a fake showcase at E3, because a lot of that stuff that we see at E3 be fake, we know that. We be seeing demos and stuff, and when the real thing comes out, it's nothing like it. But if you can't put together some fake demos, some fake stuff, if you are lacking in that bad, when you can't put together a presentation at E3 to make your product look decent, then that's a reflection on you. That maybe we need to implement something else. So in a lot of ways, E3 as a milestone template works very well to 
let you know if your product is light on its foot. How heavy is this? Wow, man, we really ain't got nothing to show. We need to start working on something and something soon. So while you got something at E3, something that works towards the end of the year, while everybody's jumping out their shoes and socks and buying Xbox One sets, right? <laughs> They're buying Xbox One sets. And some reports I've heard more than PlayStation 4s. I don't know. I don't know the validity of those reports. But that's what I'm hearing. And you could make the argument, well, everybody already has PlayStation. I never saw PlayStation before, baby. Never stopped them before, baby. PlayStation's always figured out, okay, well, we need to just come up with another color console. We need to come up with another, with another show. Something to where if the competition has something coming at the end of the year, the most integral part of the season, we got we can combat it. We got this Prince Purple Color Xbox, I mean PlayStation. Oh, this is something that I already got one, but I'm going to trade this one and get some credit and buy this Prince Purple PlayStation. No, they had nothing. And E3 would have been a great gaze to let you know that you were light on your foot, that you had nothing. Never rest on your laurels. So for business purposes and business practices, I don't even think it's a it's a smart idea. I mean, I can see that there's some pros, but even at a business standpoint, because it's in the gamer mindset that E3 is a norm, is the pentacle. That's just, that's it. Everybody knows what E3 is that plays video games. They may not all watch it, but they know what it is. And once that casual starts to pique their interest, and they're like, I got a couple extra dollars this tax season. I'm going... Like, give me that PlayStation or that next Xbox. Let me see what's going on. Let me turn on, tune in E3. Let me go on YouTube and tune it in. See what's going on there. Hmm. Once you got that happening, you see the rapid change that you could potentially cause in turning a casual to a staunch supporter of your product or services. I just gave you an example. And we all know of these people. We all know of them. We all know that casual. We put like someone like myself that's been gaming for 30 years. It's interesting to see the transformation of these people. Again, I've had people that were staunch three that I mean that really didn't gain, but got on board with the 360. And I watched them slowly transition into PlayStation fanboys. Because of the mindshare game. And E3 was a big factor in that. Um, and then just with fanfare period, even non-fanboys, you trying to drastically shift the 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 uh, per, per, uh, trying to drastically shift the mindset of the consumer by not doing a show. It's just bad. You're trying to say. We don't want to put our, sell, our product on stage with anybody else. We're going to show it to you by ourselves. And to beckon back to that Apple scenario. Well, before I get into that, let me get to my chat because I neglected y'all too long. Um, Devin got the box said skipping E3 is dumb no matter what, bro. Velvet Lulu said that black mini fridge <laughs> will be in my house day one. <laughs> and, all right. So I appreciate y'all coming through. So when it comes to Apple, Apple has become so huge, so huge. Like over multiple generations, over multiple cycles that they can afford to do that. They're Apple. They've become such a global conglomerate with everything that they've do for a very long time. They can do that. Right now, especially now, it's not a given. 
that PlayStation will have the 100 million to 50 million spread that it's always had. It, it's not a given. Yes, they've done it in multiple generations. Yes, they are a big name. But Apple is big in multiple vicinities. We're just talking about one vicinity, which is gaming. And even within gaming atmosphere, they're, they're, they're king in one area, console gaming. They're not innovating on the cloud and making cloud gaming premiere. They're not even doing so in VR. I mean, they're not making it premiere. They may be the lead VR pusher, but VR is it's a, it's a, it's a drop in the bucket. I could understand if everything that micro, I mean, that Sony touched as far as gaming just was blowing it out of the stratosphere. The iToy was at 20 billion sales. You know, you, you get what I'm saying. Then they could have their whole, their, their own, what's it called? Because it would make sense because they wouldn't be able to show everything at E3. Apple can't show its whole lineup of conglomerate products and services at CES alone. They need their own event. Sony doesn't. Sony was sifting through the, the, the garden and going through rocks and garbage trying to put together an E3 a couple years ago. They don't have content oozing like that. Not saying that they don't have any. Not saying that their content when they do show it won't be the best. I do believe that. But what I'm saying is, don't stop comparing them to Apple. They are no way, shape, form, or fashion anything like Apple. They can't do their own show and have the same impact. The only reason why it looked like, on the surface, that not being at E3 2019 didn't hurt them is because Microsoft did such a horrible job. But opposite, we got to stop looking at everything through the prism of Microsoft. My, it's not a binary choice. By them, though, not having anything to show, them not having a measuring stick to their products and services in 2019, them just saying, well, we don't really think we have much, so we're not showing up. They didn't provide the big bang at the end of 2019 like they normally do. They didn't. The got dag on Xbox One said, to various reports, sold more than a PlayStation 4. What? Are you serious? So Sony, right now, needs to be at an E3. They don't need to be at an E3 because Microsoft will then fly out of the room. I don't believe I don't believe that. I have my doubts about that because Microsoft is going to knock it out of the park. Hell no. But what better way if we all believe that the PlayStation is going to come out and be so much more superior than the Xbox, what better way than to show it side by side? Go to the show, put your PlayStation there, do, the, do what you got to do. This is how you trade games on Xbox, but this is how you trade games on PlayStation. Whatever you got to come up with and show it side by side. What better way to do that? What better way to solidify your product? That's why E3 is so powerful as far as its format and as far as its outreach. You don't get that out of, you don't get the wow factor out of PlayStation having its own show Number one, they're not competing side by side. Number two, they don't have the plethora of ultra successful things besides just console sales and game sales. All their other peripherals and everything else that they do in relation to gaming ain't knocking it out the park like that. So there's no point. Apple is different. Everything that they do is golden. So I just want to kill that Apple babble. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, I've said I don't. I'm not a staunch believer that Microsoft is going to kill it. I, you know me. I got my doubts about Phil, but this ain't about Phil right now. It's about Sony. But what if Microsoft does 
surprise us? What if they do surprise us? What if Microsoft comes to E3, shows us, I don't, I'm on, what, five to six exclusives, big name, big ticket exclusives, most of which, which are in production. But what if they show us five to six exclusives? Two of those exclusives are only going to be done console wise on the Series X or the Series S, the Series family. Two of them are coming out at launch. And the other one or two, you know what I'm saying, is it is um coming next year. And they all, and for the most part, these exclusives are like, wow. They blow people aback. What if Microsoft does surprise us? And what does that do for PlayStation? Again, not to say PlayStation won't have any tricks up its sleeve. They might. But I'm curious. I'm curious. Again, I don't think that the lineup is in trouble. I think Right now, from what I know of Xbox, what they've shown us, and what we know of Sony, even in these questionable times, I'm pretty confident that what you're going to get at launch from PlayStation is going to have more broad appeal than what you're going to get from Xbox at launch. I, that, that, that If I was a betting man, that's where I would put my chips at. That being said, I don't think that PlayStation themselves is that confident and what they do have the show and they don't want to pin it side by side because people are so used to Sony clobbering Xbox. And even though they may have confidence that, you know, the public perception is going to be in favor of theirs. I don't think that they're confident that they can clobber Xbox. But what if due to your, your, your lack of confidence, Instead of you saying using E3 and your inability to really showcase at E3 as a litmus to say we're light on the foot. What if instead you did try to beef up what you had to present? You did make it snazz or you did make it look more appealing. What if opposed to doing all that, you decide you're not going to show up because, you know, Microsoft might just muff it up and they don't. What impact is that going to have? <laughs> what impact is that going to have? And that beckons to my previous point. That's why I say where E3 was important, even important for, for uh, companies, even though it was nerve wracking for them, there was a lot of pressure. That pressure allowed you to take an honest gauge to what you had to present year in and year out and say mirror, mirror on the wall. Do we have the best product of them all? And if you couldn't at the very least within a reasonable realm put together fake demos, if you couldn't do that, then that would let you know that you're too light on your foot. So E3, and basically in so many words, what I was saying is E3 is was keeping game companies honest. And by you buying out of E3, you just open yourself to so much risk. Period. Whether you like it or not, that's just the way that it is. Um, but yeah, think about that. What if Microsoft does surprise us? Again, I'm in a camp where I believe that may not be the case, but what if, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a crystal, I don't have the magic eight ball in front of me to shake it and tell you. I don't know. So because it's an unknown, Instead of you saying, well, we may not be that most confident. We're going to do something separate. We're lacking. The old regime would have said, we're lacking just in our based offerings. We got to, we got to spice this stuff. We got to add a little flavor. We got to add a little, we got to add a little uh, uh, sea salt, a little season salt to this. You know what I'm saying? Spice it up. Add a little ca Cajun pepper to this. All right. Not now. And 
I, I think that even even on a money front, where we talk about rent and space and all that other stuff, their best bet would have been to do what EA is doing, or maybe like a hybrid, like what Microsoft is doing. But even if it's if you're having issues with uh, the ESA as is as being reported, why not just rent a location close to there? Why not rent a location and do what EA does? Just have a have an event close to E3, something that people can, so you can put your stuff, your product on a stage and say, we are that confident of what we're doing. We're going to pin it up against your co- your content and let, let, let's see who's best. That leads me to my last point on the subject matter. I don't think Jim Ryan gets it. Nor do I think he cares about the mindshare game. I think Jim Ryan is straight bottom line. Pleuromatics, big ups to you, homie. Did a great job on uh, Next Gen Show um, last night, man. We got to hook up and do some stuff too, man. Maybe get you on Scram Punk's uh, episode or two. I think Microsoft's going to surprise us just from the way they are moving right now. It's possible. I mean, here's my thing. I'm going to talk about that. Anything's possible, but I'm doubtful. I'm going to give you my reasons why I'm doubtful in a little bit. I'm doubtful. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going. I'm not going to sell you a bag of goods, a fake, a folk, a fake goods. You know what I'm saying? With a false bottom to it. I'm not going to do that. I'm doubtful. And that's a bigger reason why. That's a segue to what I'm saying about mindshare. Uh, and E3. Like Jim Ryan don't care about the mindshare game. He don't. If history is a steward of wise things to do, then we know that on the brink of you having not so much or you falling short of expectations in a console generation, it's vital that in that last year or two of that console's generation before you go into the next generation, that you have to amaze and awe. That'll help you get mind share back. What in history showed us that? PlayStation 3. Those last two years, particularly after that hack that we thought would have destroyed Sony and probably would have destroyed anybody else. That was their time to show and prove. And they came up with the PlayStation Plus thing where you know, they were honest and look, man, we, we, we have to start getting to a point to where you got to, you're going to have to pay for, for online. This, we can't provide this free. Like, you know, for security purposes and stuff like that, we can't be nilly, milly nilly about this. So we got, but if you join us and you, um, if you join us and you pay for the subscription model, we'll give you two free games. And then not cause games with gold. And then now, now that is a big re- reason. Like a lot of people on the PlayStation side are comparing what they're getting for free that people got to pay for in addition with Game Pass. Whether you got Game Pass for a dollar or not, it, it, it's it's not, Game Pass inherently is does not come with your subscription. And at some point in time, you're gonna have to pay full retail for it. That's the argument that a lot of PlayStation gamers have right now. So that was integral. That all came in those last few years. And the reason why I'm doubtful of Microsoft is because they had the stage to themselves last year. They had the stage themselves last year, a very critical year for them, and they decided to be concerned about video games being classified a, a you know, a, a disease or video game addiction being classified as a disease so they wanted to show video games in a better light. They were worried about goofy, silly shit like that. Excuse my French. They were worried about stupid, silly, goofy, gumby, dumb, stupid, silly stuff like that. Instead of saying that this is E3. We got this stage to ourselves. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. We can turn things around. Sony is pinning themselves against the wall and put themselves in a the bad spot. They can't even come. The spotlight is on us and they showed you Bambi simulator for eight hours. 
Why? That's why I am <laughs> not confident of Microsoft taking that mantle and, and killing it with it. I'm not confident, but again, anything's possible. Cold Blood Sensei, what is up, brother? What is up, man? Good to see you as always. Big time supporter. But yeah, man, that, that's why I'm not caught. But again, we don't know. As I said, I, and I've said that a thousand times. But in relation, but because of that fact, I don't think Jim Ryan understands the importance of how how much of a sound wave it will send out. Not just you having your own event, but to go to E3 if Microsoft repeats, if they underperform again. And Sony just holds the line. Um, I've been streaming for about an hour, but you know me, I talk about two things for an hour, Cold Blood says. He says, how long did you stream? I just woke up blank. I've been going for an hour, brother, but that, you know, I've never, really, I haven't even covered anything. You know how much I can babble. So you ain't missed much of nothing. I've just basically said that I, I, I think that Sony needs to be at E3. Sony needs to be at E3. For the fans, primarily, and then for the simple fact that they can, they can really, Sony can really capitalize. Again, if Microsoft doesn't do it the way that they're supposed to, then that's, that's like double the XP. That's like double XP weekend. <laughs> for everything that you do well, you, you get it two, two folds. Because you know everybody's, their, their, their natural recourse is to be down on Microsoft and boost up Sony. And let's just say if Microsoft does do a great job, then that's where you got to put your heads together. You got to figure it out on how to present your way the best. Just hold the line. That's all Sony got to do is go to play, or go to E3 and hold the line. Show your games. Even if you only have one exclusive in Godfall and, and, and Ghost of Tsushima, show them. And say, we're committed. And then show God fall and say, we are committed to, to fleshing out the full power of this PlayStation 5, non-terrified, whatever it is, and games. So God fall will just be the beginning. That's what you do if you don't have any more to show. Talk, hype that shit up. Hold the line. That's all you got to do. Because again, wherever Microsoft falls short, you get double the XP points. It's double XP weekend. If Microsoft just if 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 the if imps fall from the sky and lava shoots out from the walls and Microsoft doesn't mess up anywhere, if they knock it out the park, then you keep it even kill. And guess what? Even at even kill. You still you come out the way you came in with Sony still on top. Plowmatic, hell yeah, I am. <laughs> no, I just want Sony to be there. I don't get why. I'm just saying, me, a guy with less than 700 YouTube followers. I'm not the biggest content. I'm just saying, I'm just showing them how easy it is. To just get out here, how easy it is to have a sensible strategy and still show up. Um, Sony needs to be there. I kind of you kind of missed this part, Cold Blood. I new console warriors are bred and made at E3. I don't want to go over the whole story again, but I know plenty of people that as did, you know, they were hyped up about gaming. They started gaming with the 360 younger guys. They come to me, you know, because they know I'm the old head that was gaming come to me for expertise. They caught went to the PlayStation four. They normally wouldn't watch an E3, but E3 is the big Mecca of gaming. And so then they put the PlayStation four was pinned up against Xbox at that E3. There, the PlayStation 4 was put on the same stage, sort of, you know, in so many words, and outshined the other product that it was pinned up against side by side. 
And because of that, that blew their minds. They were like, oh, that's fantastic. Wow. Let's do this. I'm going with the PlayStation 4 making Switch. There's no type of impact like the impact that you have when you're competing side by side. Like Z says, still sharpen still. Yeah, they have their own event, but they're showing their product around the same time. And what I said earlier is that I think a good thing for them to do is just do that. Do what EA does, even if they're there at the event. So their product is side by side. And if they hold the line, they benefit from wherever Microsoft falters. They get double the XP. It's double XP weekend. <laughs> I don't I don't get why they're not there. It, 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 it puts so many things at risk and you lose out on so much by not being there. I get it that the staunchest people are going to buy PlayStation 5s no matter what. I get that. So you ain't got to show anything for them. But it's not just about them. This is an organic thing. Mindshare is organic. Your fanboys don't live forever. They grow up and then some of them leave gaming. So you got to create more fanboys. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is organic. And in order for you to create the more, the, the new uh, um, people that will be wholeheartedly in support of your product, you need to be at the biggest venues. You're known as a juggernaut. A juggernaut doesn't run. And it looks like Sony is what? Running. It's not good, especially at a console launch again, 2019. I mean, wasn't good. It's never good. Never done it in their 24 year history, but whatever. We vote. We're, we were over it. But at a console launch? No, nah. no. Nah. No, nah, I'm not digging that. <laughs> so here's what we got to think. Y'all. We got look, we've started to get to a point to where. We are so embedded into what's good for Sony. And we throw out the window what's good for us. Even though I spoke about it earlier, I don't care if it's good for Sony. I'm a gamer and a consumer at the end of the day. I don't get a check from PlayStation. I want to see their product at E3 pinned up against their competitors. That's what's best for all of us. When you can make those instantaneous uh, um, comparisons, that's best for all of us. To have Sony have to deal with that pressure of of showcasing their product and services to me and make sure that it's better than everyone else, that only makes a better product for me and you. I don't care what's best for Sony. As long as they do it in a way that's sustainable, do it. Cutting back a little bit, I fire, whatever. But be there. And I think that's the problem that we've run into. We're in this console war so much that everything is a binary choice. Well, Microsoft ain't doing it. But who? Ca- I don't care. Y'all know what I think about Microsoft. I am doubtful. Right now, I'm casting it like a 20, 25% chance they do what they need to do at, at E3. I'm doubtful. I've lost all hope. Just about. Hanging on on a thread. But it ain't about them. I don't care. As far as I'm concerned, they've said to me, MM2K, we got your money. Ha <laughs> ha. Super Lucky's Tale, $500 console launch. Ha <laughs> ha. Sorry, sucker. I, I get it. So until they show otherwise, I they're not talking to me. This has nothing to do with Microsoft in the long scheme of things. This has something to do with just other competitors in in, in totality and you pinning your product against theirs and showing me why yours is superior. And you get no bigger impact of that right now in gaming than E3. Now, if something else surfaces, then yeah. But Sony ain't got it all around in everything gaming to where they, it it even makes sense for them to hold their own conference uh, instead of an E3.
I talked about all their other products and services in gaming outside of consoles and console game sales. None of that other stuff on the periphery is knocking it out of the park. So they're not an Apple where everything Apple touches is golden. Apple, it makes sense for them to do a separate showcase. Not these guys. And I, and, and I don't care if they win per se in our minds. I don't care if they, if us, the console fanboys that are going back and forth on Twitter, you know, and I'm, I'll include myself in it. It's not about us. It's about the sustainability of new gamers, of, of, of increased mind share, of you at the end of the day showing me why your product is superior than everybody else? Because at the end of the day, I'm a gamer. I'm not a. I'm not a. I'm not a PlayStation um, part-time employee. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So there is no substitute for E3. Let me go to the chat. Cold Blood Sensei says, "I think Sony will show something that when E3 happens." Devin got the box. Uh. 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 uh, uh Pluromatic says at my um um at MM2K, are you concerned that the leadership that made PlayStation what they ordered that? Yeah, absolutely. Great point. They're not there. I'm glad you said that, man. You must have been reading my reading my footnotes. You was reading my footnotes, brother. Um, yeah, no, um, they're not there. And this is why you guys can't just do a binary synopsis of this. I think they're gonna do better than Microsoft. Big ups to Devin Got the Box. He subscribed for two months. Holy cow. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, here's the problem. Let's take Microsoft out of the equation. Listen, let's, let's let Microsoft do whatever they're going to do. I'm a hardcore gamer. This channel was called the Hard Knock Digital Culture, HNDC, if you didn't understand it. As far as I'm concerned, Microsoft's focus is not hardcore gaming. They want to show you that gaming is more than headshots and kills. So I could care less. I, I don't care. I don't care. What I'm trying to tell you is that as a gamer, I want to know where, not where they're just doing better than somebody that ain't even talking to me. I want to know where Sony is showing me that they're striving to put their best foot forward, not a foot forward past somebody else that ain't even in the realm that I'm caring about. That's like telling me, uh, oh man, you should see this boxer. Why? Because he punches harder than Fred Rogers. Who? What? Who cares? Who cares? So, we got to stop with this binary choice stuff. But what we need to do is we got to look at Jim Ryan. I don't think he gets mind share. And you got to remember that. The people at PlayStation. That are synonymous with the greatness and the turnaround that they were able to do either are no longer there or no longer have authority or any major roles at the company. And all this suspect stuff that's angered the base, that's made people, like Z said, want to jump off their top bunk bed and hang themselves, <laughs> hang themselves, excuse me, I'm sorry. All that's happened under who? Jim Ryan. So don't think that there's just some magical wizard sitting by the servers in, in PlayStation or Sony that every time something good needs to happen, he just waves his wand and it happens. There are some very integral things. I'm going to talk about them a little bit. Some very integral things that happen on why PlayStation is where it's at. And a lot of people behind that are now gone. The only people that are quote unquote still there are who? You. You're still around. You know 
what greatness is. You know what it is to fight. You know what it is to run. So you better hold Jim Ryan and Herman Holst to that same litmus. Stop acting like a getting just a magical imp that's flipping coins back in, in the air like some uh, juggler in the basement of Sony that could just that just makes greatness happen. There was a mindset of culture and stewards with tenure there that are no either no longer there or they don't have a voice anymore. Yoshida's in the basement opening bail. Uh, Raging on says it's just delayed by one month. It ain't even that bad. Uh, he's talking about Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, Cold Blood Sensei said, Wow, it's dry like a mofo now till April. Yeah, it is, brother. And then everything's coming in April, which is like, I don't get, I don't get these game companies, man. I saw that earlier. I, I, I'm, you know what? I'm which, even though um, Final Fantasy VII Remake ain't really on my radar, Cold Blood. Um, my favorite Final Fantasy was Final Fantasy VI. I'm with you, brother. I'm with you. Because why are you dumping everything in April with Cyberpunk 2077? Like, spread it out. Like, go to May. Go to June. Like, what are y'all doing? You won't do it. Do it. I mean, no, push it. Get, give us some room as gamers. We got to stop fighting for these individual companies and, and look at what, what's in our best interest as gamers. When we start doing that, then the industry will continue to grow and be better. But I don't care about Microsoft's bottom dollar. I don't care about Sony's bottom dollar. As long as they're making enough to be sustainable and they're able to survive, then that's fine. I want them to go all out. Oh, May is Last of Us. Like, we, they got to do something. June. The new June. <laughs> you know, so spread this out so we can play these damn games. And again, it's not smart business sense because you you clutter your games in with all these other high, high, highly anticipated titles. So people got to make choices. They got to make choices. All right. So that's why I think, and I've babbled on for an hour on why I think Microsoft, I mean, Xbox, uh, Jesus Christ. Sony needs to be at E3. It's not because... By some de facto binary choice, like I said earlier, Microsoft wins. Hell no. But as a gamer, I just, I, I need Sony there. I need that fire and that desire. Fire and desire. I need it from Sony. <laughs> I need it from them to show that, I, I need to know that that killer instinct, right? I need to know that it's still in their blood. And you should want that too. All right. So that's what I think about that. Cold Blood Sensei says Tokyo Game Show is the new E3. And also, my bot, uh, let me see here. Do I got any more messages? I just got the one from Cold Blood Sensei. Just so y'all know. Um, if y'all want to leave a message in a free messaging app, you can do so here. It helps out a lot. It helps out a lot. All right. Most, would you ever go to E3? Yeah, we're planning. We don't have all the details lined up right now, but Triple B is planning to go to E3. Devin said, it's gone, it's dead. Yo, she in a sweatshop. <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 we we're planning to go to E3 this year. But I don't, I'm going to be honest with you, without Sony there, I don't even know, <laughs> I don't even know who I want to go. <laughs> I don't even know who I want to go. I'm going to keep it real. Unless Phil makes some indications. Like this, from what I understand, there's going to be a showcase by Microsoft shortly where they're going to show off aspects of the new console and the new generation. If that gets me excited, then I'll keep my ticket in reserve. If not, I don't know. 
All right. So perfect segue is I think just overall with, with all the lukewarm news that we're getting as of late. I mean, I get it. I know that the play, I know that the series X was released at the game awards and everybody's so excited about it, but I, but you, what you guys got to understand is this ain't Xbox bashing. I've already been here and I go by the old adage, fool me once, shame on you. You see what I'm saying? I normally don't buy consoles at launch because I, I, I'm concerned about the whole faulty factor. Like normally the first line of any technical product that comes off the conveyor belt is of course the most faultiest. I usually wait till the second or third generation of the first batch come out, which is normally like three to six months come out um, before I start making my purchases. Like my 360, I got like six months after launch. So the very first console that I got at launch was the X. I was so excited. Bought me new TVs and everything, man. I was super excited for the launch of the Xbox One X. It was so much hype. I didn't know, and I wasn't the wiser. I didn't know all about Phil Spencer. I, I was kind of concerned with some of the things that he said, but I didn't realize what was going on at Microsoft. I didn't know all the people behind the scenes, all like that. And um, when I got that X, you know, it, it, it played games very well, but the deciding factor was the, cur the, the curated content that was spe specific for that console coming out. Like what was Xbox going to release that would make the box sing? And what did we get? We got Sea of Thieves. We got State of the K2. We got Crackdown this year. That was their offering. So I've already been here. I've already been here. I've already been here where they showed the jaw dropping graphics and I've seen the metros. I've seen it all. Only for all those hopes and aspirations to fizzle away at the end of the day. Because gamers are like, explain to me God of War. If I need this $500 box, explain to me God of War or my $200 box. You see what I'm saying? So I've been there. So I, I've already been burnt. And again, shame, fool me once, shame on you. I need to see a game. And I need to hear a commitment from Microsoft before I get all worked up about anything that they have to say and present. I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but PlayStation 5, mind share is looking bad. Xbox with the stage to themselves, like I said, they, they can't punch their way out of a wet paper bag. <laughs> They're still talking this unicorn and rainbow stuff without a commitment to the hardcore. And what am I talking about? You'll see when I talk about that Survivor interview. Now, and, and you guys have heard me. I'm not going to gore you with too much of it, even though I've been streaming via Stadia. And my stream's been buttery smooth, baby. Rage and Otto tell you, my streams are better now than they were on my 2070, aren't they, Rage? Tell them. Tell them. You've been here when I've been maxing out this and fighting for 48 frames. Now I get a smooth 60 frames per second on a web browser and my streams look buttery smooth. So Stadia as a performing outlet is great. It's just that they got their own issues too. Stadia ain't taking this thing seriously. We don't even know what games is coming to the bug. I mean, we got, we got a surprising boost for early adopters, but we're talking about getting on a big stage. If you're getting on a big stage, I mean, we got to know at the very least that the third party games are coming day and date, the vast majority of them. And there's no indication of that in 2020. Like there's doubts that Cyberpunk 2077 is going to come on Stadia the day that it releases everywhere else. Even though I'm I'm like 99.999% sure that it's, it's going to perform better on Stadia like everything else. If it comes out a month later, guess where I'm not getting it? Just take a guess. Sadia. <laughs> for, those, for those of you that were too slow to, to follow me. And y'all know how much I've been capping for Stadia. But if it comes out four weeks more or later, I'm not getting it on Stadia. What's the point? 
I would have loved. I would have loved to get it on State Stadium PC. I would have double dipped and got it in both both of those places. I probably would have got it on Stadia first because I would allow to be able to take it with me. But if that's not coming until just to, to the platform, like, so and, and, and that's a whole bunch of stuff. Everything is up in the cloud. Now, granted, there's been some news that YouTube is signing some streamers. And if you've been following Stadia News, you know that streaming is very important to Stadia. So you know they're gonna they're gonna be curating a lot of Stadia content through these streamers. That's cool. But until they start saying something, I don't think we can even take them seriously in 2020. So that leaves us with who? Nintendo. And Nintendo giving us games still in 480p. <laughs> Thank you, Rage Now. He said it's silky smooth. Homie Cold Blood since that again. He said, question, why is supposed to be always mad and screaming his lug out when it's about Sony, but Xbox, he chills and says rumor. <laughs> because he feels intern and he's clipping his toenails. And the toenail hits him in the eyelid and he gets a little irritated every time he hears the boss. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't, you know. I get where people like my brother Post Up come from when they're talking and they're saying things like, look, y'all never say never. Sony is very well likely do this and Sony may well likely do that. And people were like, no, no, Sony will be back at E3 in 2020. Or no, Sony would never get into cloud gaming and then they sign that deal with Microsoft or Sony would never give up on their exclusives. And then they do the exclusive. They sign away their exclusive with um, major league baseball. So I get post ups frustration there because he is right there. However, to your point, cold blood sensei, that doesn't by, by default, that doesn't give the that doesn't make Microsoft the winner. And I know we say this jokingly all the time, but how does that make Microsoft great again? How does that make Xbox great again? It doesn't. Because even when Sony's at its worst and they're not even there, Microsoft craps the bed. They showed you Bambi Simulator for eight hours. So that's why I say gaming is in a bad state, y'all. I don't know. I'm just um I'm going to be honest with you. As a gamer, I'm dismayed. I'm dismayed. So, I just want to put that out there. I don't know, man. Devin got the box said, everyone caps for Sony for no reason. Laugh out loud sheep. Cold blood sensei says facts. How does that, and it's not a binary choice. Because Sony didn't show up. Classic example, y'all. Let's keep it real. I keep it real here. Everybody getting it today. Let's keep it real. By Sony not showing up 2018, did that make Xbox's conference great? No, it was their worst conference ever. So everybody on all sides, I'm pleading with you, please. This is a year of reflection. I don't mind the console war, but this is this is like time out, time out. You know what I'm saying? This is halftime. Please go to your respective corners. Talk to the people that are heavy hitters in your platform of choice and have the honest conversations because gaming is looking dismal right now. It's looking lukewarm and dismal. Again, I know this ain't the best example, but as a Stadia gamer, I had to do a two and a half hour podcast to have a coming to Jesus speech, but my Stadia game was like, look, them not showing any games, even though I don't care personally because I'm happy. This ain't it. And guess what they said? They're like, you're right. They all went back after Pitchfork's Stadia. Where's the game? Stadia, where's the games? But see, they, they don't operate in this console war bubble like how the rest of us do. We got to reconfigure our mind state. We want to sit here and every time somebody brings up a reasonable uh, um, fault of uh, console A or console B, the automatic response is, well, what's, what's Xbox doing? Or what, what, what did PlayStation do? That's not the answer. 
as I just proved to you. It's not a binary choice. By Sony not showing up, did that make Xbox's conference great? No, we just had a shitty E3. You know what I'm saying? Part because nobody was holding Microsoft's feet to the fire. They just assumed it was going to be great. And nobody was holding Sony's feet for the fire for not showing up. Because they thought, oh, they didn't need to be there. We had a shitty E3. People walked away from that E3 because everybody still watched E3. I don't want to hear that garbage. Well, you know what? They don't need to be at E3. I don't care because everybody still watched E3. And everybody that watched E3 said what? Man. That was sad. That was a sad E3. I've, I've never felt so down about E3. Everybody walked away depressed. We were depressed. Because we still hold weight with E3. But we want to get out here on the internet, on Twitter, or wherever, and say, oh, it don't matter because it's like it's a binary choice. No. Go to Sony and say, y'all should have been there. This is effed up. Xbox, go to Microsoft and say, y'all better not do what y'all did last year. F that BS about headshots and kills don't make. This is a hardcore gaming convention. The people that was going to play Bambi Simulator don't watch this. The hell are you talking about? This is a year of reflection. This is halftime now. Stop with all the console war bibble babble. Go back to your respective corner and start talking some common sense. Give me one second. Let me blow my goddamn on nose. Y'all got me spitting phlegm off through my nasal passages. Hold on. My bro, Plyromatics. Great job. Great Xbox guy. Bro, you need to get you a channel. I'm telling you right now. Get you a channel. You got some good things going. Hey, look, man. If you uh, if you interested, we we can talk DM me and Twitter. <laughs> we got a little chat. We got a sister channel over. Uh, sister channel. Oh, golly, I'm knocking shit over. I'm so excited here. We got a sister channel of broadband bullies called PNTS Network. A little, little network we got going on over there. Come and check us out over there. We can talk. We could talk, get you, you know, get you lined up for both PNTS and some broadband bully content, man. But um, the reason why I brought him up is because he was there last night. Z wanted to have a straight up honest conversation. And we got into a lot of console war nonsense last night. And you could just see, you could just see the exhaustion. <laughs> you can see the exhaustion in Z's face. Because he wanted to say, look, guys, I had some serious information that I had to hold back on. I couldn't tell y'all. But now that the cat's out of the bank, now I can tell y'all. And then it was some console war stuff that was spewed out. And you could just see the exhaustion in his face. Am I right, Plyro? I'm right. Y'all was there. If y'all saw it, if y'all didn't see it, go back and check it out. Hey, I got you, brother. I got you. You ever interested? Let me know. <laughs> but I'm telling you, man, look. He was there. He saw it. Yeah, he said, Pyro says he wanted to talk serious about the things he heard. He didn't get through it at all. What Z is going to have to do, see, this is what happened. That panel was full of some smart people. I'm not going to single name. I'm not going to name, but there's some smart people because we all talk behind the scenes. But we are too programmed to talk console war. I've been slamming Xbox for the last 18 months. Opposite of E3 when they, when they fooled me. Opposite of E3 last year. I just knew they were going to do something. But even I had to come out last night and say, look, man. Jim Ryan doesn't, him and his new team, they're, they're not the old team. Like, we got to open our eyes and be concerned. And it's not just about who's better. Every gaming discussion about a particular console maker doesn't have to be about who's better. It should be about who's doing their best. Okay. I'm going to say that again for y'all to etch in y'all minds. 
take back to your respective camps and start spreading some sensible commentary, okay? Every discussion that we have about a particular console maker should not be about who's better, but who's doing their best. And if you think that Sony is doing their best, you're lying to yourselves. If you even think Microsoft has showcased their best, you're lying to yourself. This is technology. We are consumers at the end of the day. At the end of the day, that's all that matters. I want the biggest bang for my buck. Or are you doing your best? That's all that matters and when z's trying to do something like be serious and have a serious conversation and he can't have it even with smart people on the panel because their natural reflex is to have console war bibble babble going on then that's sad because if us content creators can't talk sensible how are we going to expect you guys to do it too? I'm not saying we're better than y'all, but y'all get a lot of y'all stuff from us. But I'm telling you as a content creator, as someone that kicks in Microsoft's ribs on a daily, that at the grand scheme of things, this is beyond Microsoft. This is about Sony not being there. This is not about Sony when I talk about Microsoft. This is about them recapturing the mindshare of the hardcore that made the box what it is today. And I'll even throw Google State in there for shits and giggles. This ain't about all that other stuff and Phil's Harrison's ball head. Yeah, this is about him coming out with a product that is damn good despite the lies. It's damn good. It performs better than consoles. But you ain't got nothing to play on it. We got to stop having these battles when we want to get to the root of the problem because that's what these companies want us to do. All they want us to do is hold the litmus to, well, am I better than that one? And I always say this, and you got to excuse my French, I always say this. A cup of piss is, it, it, it's better than a, than a shit sandwich. Does that make the cup of piss a good beverage? No. So we got to stop this. We do. Because this is, this is abysmal. And I don't like... Um where things are headed out of either camp. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like Microsoft's. There's still, you, you'll see in this survivor interview. I don't, I don't like, I don't like their lingo. I don't like the mind share of Jim, attempt at Jim Ryan. I don't, I don't just trust him. And, um, you know, even with Stadia, I mean, again, they've, but I, again, you, 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 you're, you're your ability to razzle dazzle me has to be consistent. All right, before I go to the last section, I want to let y'all know we're opening up phone lines now. Okay, so if you want to call in, I want to hear y'all out. This last little piece is the Microsoft interview. You can call in right now to 724 739-3612. Let me test it out, make sure it's working. I'm gonna call it right now. So I'm, I'm supposed to do this as a professional. 724-739-3612. Uh, See if I hear some ringing. If it's working, I'll hear some ringing. Oh. Okay, I do hear ringing. Y'all can't hear it because I got it muted, but I hear some ringing. Okay, good, good, good. Awesome. Awesome sauce. I know cold blood. Um, I'm going to do something. I'm going to try to get a toll-free number, brother. I'm going to try to get a toll-free number. I'm working on that. Because people like you that support me all the time, that's in the free message and app, you know, I got I got to do something for y'all. I'll get a toll free. I'll get a German number. Matter of fact, that's what I might do. Because Cold Blood Sensei is always, the, you know, providing towards the cause. He's always putting something in the free message and app, and it don't cost. It don't tell him. It don't cost him a dime. I might just get a German number just for you, Cold Blood. Me and you can just have talk, talk this shit out. 
because you support me all the time. I think that's what I'm going to do. No, no, no BS. Big up to the homie Cold Blood Sensei. All right, but again, number 724-739-3612. If you want to call in and spill your thoughts on anything that I've said or anything I'm about to talk about, which is this Survivor interview. Um, no, no, Cold Blood. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. It, 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 it I probably could do it at, at no extra cost. I might just do that. I might have a four. I might have a German number, <laughs> and 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 then have a a regular number for everybody else. Cause I appreciate your support. All right, so let's do this. Let's switch over. Y'all see this? This is a Survivor interview. That. Let me increase the size on this a little bit. And it says Xbox Game Studios in execution mode, but still acquiring Phil Spencer. I've seen this in a lot of Xbox. Um, let me do one more thing. Unmute. Sorry. Could y'all hear that? I was wondering, could y'all hear that? Y'all probably could have. All right. Um, but anyway, back to, and then when I, I was asking, could y'all hear the phone ringing when I was testing it out? Anyway, I'd love to see us continue to get new stories with new points of view into our first party portfolio. While Xbox Game Studio is largely in execution mode, developing new games for the likes of Xbox Series X, Phil Spencer told Survivor that it still has gaps in that need for new points of view. We're always open. Phil Spencer confirmed at the Xbox Game Studios that had acquired Ninja Theory, um, Compulsion Games, Undead Labs, and Playground Games, in addition to a formation of a new studio um, called The Initiative. All right. He says, while he's in, he, pleased with the studio's growth, he still says there's room for improvement. We're always open, Spencer said, and when asked if we're still interested in acquiring new developers, I like the ge geographic diversity that we've been growing with our studios. If you look at Asia, we don't have first part in Asia. I think that's an opportunity for us. Uh, we talked a little bit more. Where's the section I really... Okay, it's really what creators will do. At XO19 in London, Xbox announced Obsidian's Grounded. <laughs> Golly. Uh, alongside another look at Ninja Theory's Bleeding Edge. He says here, both of those were started before the acquisition. Spencer stressed. So we saw them and then we were going through the acquisitions at both studios. It really... What creative studios will do, they'll usually find a small group that wants to go off and try something different. It's funny with Ninja Theory because the first game with Nina and Tameen was Kung Fu Chaos, an original Xbox. I see similarities with Kung Fu Chaos, what is between Bleeding Edge. All right. And he says the ability to give the studios the financial stability so they can experiment with new things like the stuff that he's talking about, the bleeding edges and the, and the ground and all the other stuff. Absolutely. is one of the things that Matt Booty and the team brings. He said, because you have new studios and, and enough rolling business, it's not make or break for every experiment that a studio takes. We should be able to take some risks while Microsoft has confirmed that Ninja's theories Next project is Senua Saga's Hellblade. We still don't know when the next big things are from most of the teams at the Xbox studios. All right. So a lot of people saw that. Well, before I get into that, Cold Blood Sensei says Xbox Series X is just a remastered console for like two years. I don't know how bots defend this. Um... <sighs> yeah. 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 That's basic. Look, to Cold Blood's point, let's have, I, I just want to have old, I just want to have honest conversations. Again, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to kill anybody's enthusiasm for the, the Series X. You got it. You got the money. You're going to do it. Do it, man. I'm just saying for those of us that were like, ooh, I want true next generation experiences, things that only can be done via Series X or PC. You're not going to see them for a year or two. Why? 
because opposite of third party and third parties aren't going to be look third parties aren't going to be itching for the most part to only do games that are for new consoles for the small base they're going to make their games playable everywhere and therefore there's going to be limitations to what can be done classic example destiny for crying out loud we have such short-term memories destiny for crying out loud Remember where Destiny got to a point to where they said all of our newer content, we're not doing on the 360 anymore, the PlayStation 3. We're only doing them on the newer consoles. Because the experience on the older consoles bottlenecks, but you could do across the board. So they said our newer, so your game saves are no longer, you're no longer going to have cross save. We're going to split your game save to the 360 experience and then to the Xbox one experience to the PlayStation three experience to the PlayStation four experience. We're going to split them because what we're going to do from here on out ain't possible anywhere else. And we can't try to filter this down or make a square fit into a circle peg. I mean, make a square peg fit into a circle. hole. we can't do that. We just saw this. So, of course, making games for other uh, um, or for older hardware bottlenecks the experience. It does. Or, or uh, Activision wouldn't have done that. There was, all, there was 160 million consoles out there when they decided to do that from the prior generation. They would have just kept making games across the board. Right? Right. So you're not getting full-fledged Microsoft-developed new experiences out of the camp for two years, possibly. For one to two years. So to Cold Blood Sensei's point, the Xbox Series X is just a remaster for, a remaster for consoles for like two years. Even people want to bring up scaling on PC. As a PC game, I'm going to tell you, Rage can tell you too. Even PC has a cutoff point. Prime example, Call of Duty that just came out. Minimum specs is, I think, a 690, a GTX 690. That's a two teraflop card. That's in 2019. They said you can't do less than a two teraflop card. Xbox is going into 20. 2021, possibly 2022, still supporting a 1.3 teraflop system. Again, we got to stop the foolery. We got to stop the foolishness. So yeah, if you want up res, if you want to remat, if you want remastered editions of your favorite Xbox games and you want to shell out five or more likely $600 for it, go for it. That's for you. But I need to see at launch from Xbox what they plan to provide. What have they been working on second party? Are they working on anything second party? Now that video, that interview, that infamous interview with MCV where they said that they don't want to, um, they don't, they, they, all their games are going to be, you know, cross gen. They didn't specifically say second party, but in that article that I'm pretty sure Microsoft saw, and Microsoft could have very easily clarified if it was wrong. They said it's not hard to fathom that this is going to stretch across the board that Xbox wants all of their games specific that has their logo on it, that first party, second party, or third party. They want all of the people with all of their consoles to be able to play it, period. That's their strategy.
Now, Pl Plyromatic says, unless Microsoft has found a way to do this, they did do it with Middle Earth Shadow War where the Nemesis system was on the X, but not the S in OG because it wasn't possible on those systems. That's a very good point. Now, if they do something like that, then great if they're willing to do that. And I wasn't even aware that that wasn't uh, uh, available on the other systems. But I'm, but I go to a more recent, not, not, not too far away from there, but a more recent scenario where from all accounts, PUBG had got up to 60 frames per second, right? Or something on the X. And because of parody, Microsoft made them come out, come back out and say, no, it's going to be 30. So unless you see systems or you see a lot more AI or better AI, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, but being that a game like Shadow of Mordor, and that's a great point, I hope they do it. Um, I hope they do it, at least for the single player experiences. But the fact that now games are more multiplayer based, especially on Xbox, they might be less inclined to do it. Because in the, in, in, in the multiplayer space, you're going to have people on different systems that's going to have two totally different experiences outside of just the visuals. But the Cold Blood Sensei's point, like, come on. And in addition to that, this interview concerns me because even though they're flailing in a lot of their mind share, you have PlayStation consistently come out and say, we're for the hardcore. We're going to do big games. We're going to do big games. It's going to take us a little bit long, but they routinely talk about big games. Every time I see Xbox talk about games, they talk about this rinky dinky shit. They want to talk about bleeding edge and all this other stuff. I never taught hear them talk about bringing forth Big new experiences. I mean, they did show Hellblade. It's not a new IP, but they did show Hellblade. At least, even though it's not out of their first uh, um, first party studio, at least they showed a Godfall. And again, is Hellblade going to be a system seller? I don't know. And until we see that gameplay, based off the first one, nah. It's going to look good. It's going to look fantastic. But is it going to be a system seller? Nah. Unless they show us some more stuff. They show us some more stuff that could change that could change everything. But I'm just again, all this, I want, you know, we're we're we we want it, they want to support more of these bleeding edges and grounded. Shit that sat on their shelves because they're like they're too risky. We're, we want to make them, but they're too risky to make. And that's cool and all, but I don't want to see that. I want to see where you're you're, you're putting money on the wood for them to bring us grand experiences. That might be risky too. Those are risky and a lot of grand experiences aren't done because they're considered too risky. And guess what? You, now they have access to your war chest so those can be done too. Stop showing us this rinky dinky stuff. Show us the risky, big, grandiose games because that's all I'm hearing from Sony. See how I tell y'all it's not a zero sum game. It's not a binary choice. I just, I don't, man, I don't get it. I don't get it. Well, no, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. I'm going to say this again, and I'm going to say it for the last time for a while. <laughs> you know, I ain't going to say it for the last time forever. You know, me and my big ass about. I'm going to say this for the last time for a while. Anybody that thinks Phil is a dummy, you need to go get a CAT scan. I'm going to say 99 times out of 100, Phil Spencer is the smartest person in the room. Here's the thing though. Just because you're smart, smart doesn't equate to wide reach or broad appeal. Phil has a vision on gaming that's all about unicorns and lollipops and popsicles. 
that he wants to turn Xbox into from all accounts and purposes from stuff that we can see. He does not like doing the hardcore stuff. He does not like doing the bold hardcore stuff. He is focused on connectivity. As he even admitted to Major Nelson on Major Nelson's podcast, it wasn't his idea to come out at the Game Awards and announce the X and do it in that bombastic, jaw-dropping fashion. He had to be convinced by a newer guy. But if you will go back to what Mikey Burrow said, there's one guy that makes all the decisions. So even though that slipped through, the vast majority of the decisions are coming through Phil and Phil has a vision that he wants to implement. Now, why did I bring up Phil's intelligence for the simple fact of this? A lot of us are confused. A lot of us are going back and forth because Phil knows how to do wordplay like nobody else. He is great at it. He has convinced a whole generation of gamers to pay $3.99, then $4.99, back-to-back years for consoles with no new hardcore content. Including myself. Some and in, in my 30 plus years of gaming, I've never, never bought a console at launch. Never bought a console at launch. In my 30 plus years of gaming, except for when Phil Spencer told me so. And y'all may not know me (laughs) personally, but I'm letting you know. Other people that do know knows that that's a phenomenon in the realm of MM2K. I'm very frugal with how I spend my money. Even though I'm a tech, I, I love tech and stuff like that. I love purchasing new tech and tinkering with new tech. I'm, I am I, I don't like wasting my money. And I feel like it's a waste of money a lot of times getting the first iterations of new tech. I like for it to go through its, you know, testing phases. You know, people work out the kinks and I'll get it three to six months later. That's, te- that's hardware. Games is different. I get them day one. But he convinced me in my 30 plus years of gaming to spend $500 on a console that launched with Super Lucky Tales and Forza, two games that I was, I've was i never touched and I never plan on touching. And he convinced me to do so by playing the old games that I didn't want to touch and go, ooh, why? And I was oohing and on with them each for about an hour or two, and I haven't touched them since. <laughs> so anybody that wants to doubt Phil's Mental capacity, you're fooling yourself. Because I don't doubt it. Sometimes I say to myself, I don't get it, but then I got to catch myself. I get it. Phil is a master at wordplay. And unless something cataclysmic has happened at Microsoft and somebody was able to get his ear and change his mind on a more consistent basis, that will lead to more and more actions like what we saw at the Game Awards with him releasing the X and Hellblade. Until there is proof of that, I wholeheartedly believe that Phil wants to continue to sell us eons and eons of bleeding edges, grounded, sea of thieves, state of the caves, because you got to look at it. Let's look at it. The only failure that he has out of this, this, these milly nilly games is what? Crackdown. But it was just a matter of getting that one out of the box. That was the most hardcore Xbox was going to get. He don't do hardcore. Let's just get it the hell out of here. Even though he s- says that's his favorite game, but because it's his favorite game, it was never going to get to the point that would satisfy the masses. Even Again, Phil, Phil's vision and the masses' vision for, X, uh, for Crackdown 3 we're on two totally different planes. Therefore, it was just about getting the game out. Of, getting the game out. Okay. Now, he's never had a failure under. He's he's never. He's just had a lot of rumbling and grumbling. State of decay. Beat the game of the generation. In May, state of decay did at half the price on NPD and beat the game of the generation. Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves now 
is one of the most popular games out there. Top 10 everywhere. I told, I was telling people that even though to us, the hardcore gamers, that game was dog crap, that it had a big following on PC, and now it's huge. Now the game is huge. <laughs> All right? And so on and so on. He hasn't had a failure. He put out, now Cold Blood Sensei says he put out Phantom Dust with the original assets. And that wasn't a blockbuster hit, but it sold, I think it sold a couple million. I think we Xbox dummies, I, I, if I'm right, if my memory's are, do we, 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 no, not a couple million. I think it, it, I think it wound up being a million. I think it started off at 250,000. And, but think about it. Is that a failure? All they did was re-release it in its original assets. Some Disney games, they, you know, they, they probably did okay. They probably did a million or two. So, he really hasn't had a failure in stuff that we don't like. But why should he conform to us? Being outsold three to one Xbox made six, 10 billion to Sony 16 billion. That's not a three to one gap in revenue, even though you're being outsold three, not one and a half, not two, not two and a half. Listen to me, people, listen. Three, two, one. So in closing, Phil doesn't have any incentive to listen to us. He's trying to carve out his own lane. In front of 45 million people, he showed them the Series X, gave them an image that speaks hardcore and technology and shocked the masses. Now on social media, you had Matt Booty come out and say some things that could have, you know, created some ripples, but now Sony has come out directly after that and say they ain't going to be at E3. That kills all that. <laughs> that kills all that. So with that said, I, I just don't... I don't know if... to make sure oh yeah I still have the article up I'm looking at the wrong screen um so I don't I don't know if these type of interviews help ease the concerns of us that want AAA content they don't because I don't see Phil Spencer anywhere talking about top of the line content. I don't see it. Here's what I would like for Xbox to say to ease my concerns. And then we're going to go to phone call. Matter of fact, phone lines are open now. I'm just bibble babbling. Again, you want to reach us at 724-739-3612. Call in and let's talk about it. But I'm going to say this. Here's what I want to hear from Microsoft. I want to hear something in the realm of this. <clears throat> After years of revamping, working hard to consider all consumer feedback, we have realigned our commitment to big AAA blockbuster games as how we did to get you here. However, we are also extending to those that love the more intricate friend and family oriented way of gaming as well. And we're doing all this by reaching more people in ways that are amazing and give them the best experience, no matter where they want to play big, bold and beyond. This is the new Xbox. What y'all think? What y'all think about that? Is that too cheesy? But I'm just saying, and I see you cold blood system and get to your car. But I'm just saying, listen, the reason why I, I, I wanted to do that little that that little pitch for me to be in 
Xbox marketing. The reason why I did that pitch is because we got to keep it real here. This, this is the Xbox of old anymore. This isn't the Xbox of old. They've given up on what made the old Xbox great again. They're trying to be this family friendly crowd. But they're just not being transparent on that pivot. It's one thing to pivot, be transparent about it, and say, you know what? We're going off in a different direction. It's another to be vague and consistently misleading to those that de desire this AAA big time content like how they used to get it. So because of that, something like that I think would be a great pitch. But I, we cannot hear anything from Xbox in the realm of hardcore content. We just keep getting this shit. Look at this shit. I didn't ask for this. I don't want this. And this is why you get a lot of uproar about the Xbox brand. <laughs> Cold Plus Sensei said, I don't have kids, so this shit can stay away from my household. I feel you, brother. But those are my thoughts, y'all. Phone lines are open. Let me get the Skype call up. Cold Blood Sensei says, Xbox Series X is just... Oh, no, you, that already popped up. But we could talk about that. He said, Phil played all the bots like a fiddle. He sure did. He played, he got me. He got me. This dude convinced me. Cold blood chat. I'm telling y'all. In my 30 plus years of gaming, I've never, ever. And look, I have been blessed. I ain't, I'm, I'm not sitting out here building 2080 TIs and and buying condominiums. And I, I mean, I'm not I'm not stacked like that. But I've been blessed to where if I want something, I can get it. I can get it. My wife may twirl her lips a little bit because I'm going into her Victoria's Secret money. But I can. But really, I can. Get, when I think about myself every blue moon, I can get it. But with that, I never, ever, 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 ever have bought a console at launch, particularly because of that fear. I didn't buy my 360 at launch, and I didn't get the red ring of death until, oh my God. I didn't get the red ring of death until the, the Xbox 360 Slims came out. And by that time, I had dropped that thing. It was... And it, was, it lasted me for years. And that is considering I used to be a smoker. I quit. Thank God. Quit because I'm having all types. Because <laughs> that's the last thing I need on top of the other uh, old man problems that I'm having. But I quit smoking. Um, But I used to smoke like a chimney. And what it was is I used to do 12-hour shifts. At work, I was working on a major project at work. I was building a, I can't talk too much about it, but I was building a database. It was a big time database that we, we needed at work. And I had came up with the idea. I curated it, did the pitch, everything. And the people that were working with me on it, they all got terminated because they weren't doing, turning it around fast enough. So they came to me and said, it's all in your lap now. Now you got to take this code that's already been developed and you got to make it happen. And I said, oh shit, they got rid of, <laughs> they got rid of them cats. I'm going to be next. Oh, so I was doing 12, 13, 14 hour days to get this thing out. So Monday through Friday, it was nothing but work, 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 come home, eat, sleep, get back up, go to work, 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 work. But come Friday night, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night, I had roomed in with my brother. I stayed, I was living with my brother. And those were some of my best years, period. I was, um, me and my brother had lived together. And every Friday night, he'd come home from work. I'd come home from work. And we just drink, drink, and play video games and blast music. And we both were heavy smokers, smoking like chimneys, drinking and playing video games. Um, So... And we had two of everything. I won't get into that. So I, I've told that story before. I'll get into it later. But we had two everything. So he, we, we had two 360s. We had two 
uh, PlayStations. We had two, even the old, the PlayStation 2s, 3. We had two of everything. We were like, we were in a good spot. And we had a badass PC too. So we were just constantly gaming. You know, oh, you want to play this with me? Let's do that 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 game share, or not game share, but the, the stream connect or whatever the hell they called it. You know what I'm saying? And we'd be playing games together and shit. Good times, man, good times. What I, The reason why I'm saying that is both of those 360s never suffered the red ring of deaths. Why? My brother taught me this. My brother's a little bit older than me. My brother taught me this. He said, never buy hardware in its first iteration. And I didn't. And we bought our 360s. I was itching. I kept telling him, like, bro, I got the money. I got the money. Like, no, 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 no. Just wait, wait, wait. We're having good times on our um, regular Xboxes and our PlayStation 2. Like, well, we don't even need this right now. There's nothing out right now. And I said, okay, brother, I got you. And then... We got our 360s and we smoking like chimneys and those consoles did not get red rings of death until the Xbox One S's. My brother ended up moving to um, uh, North Carolina and his went out first and a month later, mine's went out. <laughs> so even with the faulty rates that the Xboxes were at, we didn't have issues because we followed that golden rule never get new hardware at its first iteration you want to get it when it's like three to six months old you know what i'm saying i don't even know why i brought up that story why the hell did i bring up that story <laughs> i don't even remember why i brought it up but um yeah i that that, that was some great gaming and that's when xbox represented the hardcore and we just need them to get back to to older form all right, again, phone lines are open if you want to call 724-739-3612. Otherwise, I will, we will close it out. Uh, let me go to the chat here. Uh, Demon got the box. No, Cold Blood Sensei first says, Sea of Thieves is like dog-ish, just like Fortnite. Devin got the box. Says, sea of Thieves is way better in my opinion. Um, I'd have to play. I'm not. I, you know what? I've been so turned off. I don't even think. I don't even want to waste my time booting it up. <laughs> I, hear, I hear it's quote unquote better, but I don't even want to waste my time booting it up. Um, And it could be better. It's just ain't for me. Here's, here's the thing. I'm going to say this real quick to that point. Um, People, I see a lot of my Xbox brethren out there on social media saying, Triple A games are the only thing that you guys want to focus on. Y'all don't understand there's a plethora of games out there. And y'all don't want to. Um, uh oh. Y'all don't y'all don't want to acknowledge them. Something happened. Uh oh. Let me see something. Okay some reason my microphone ain't being picked up. Uh oh. Oh, I think I know why. Let me fix something real quick. Somebody did call. What was that? Being one? I got a very intricate. Okay. Okay. No, let me close it out. Did anybody try to call? No, no one tried to call. All right. Close it out and open it back up. So the the the, the theory is X, Xbox is um uh -oh. Xbox is it, it is providing more games than the average person wants to acknowledge and people just want triple A games. Now here's the thing, and I'm I'm gonna give this scenario and then then we can close out. You need Food and drink in order to survive, right? But say you come, to, I don't know, say you've been traveling and you got lost, you got stranded, and now you're dying of thirst. You've been able to eat something, but you've, you've, been, but you've, run, you've run out of water, out of your canteen. And you come across this village, right? And they're like, oh, man, we, you're dying of thirst? Great. Um... Oh, not great, but we're dying of thirst. It's good that you come across us because we got a supply of stuff here for you that can help you with that. Just so you know, though, we are now focusing so much on beef jerky. We got beef jerky in supply. Would you like some? And you're like, okay, well, I'm thirsty. I'm glad I'm here now. 
because there's been a drought, but sure, why not? I'll have some beef jerky. You're like, okay, well, you're going to bring out the water? You're like, well, got you. But uh, here, try some more beef jerky, okay? This is, this, or oh, this ain't beef jerky. This is turkey jerky. It's Cajun turkey jerky. It's good. You take some, like, oh, that's great. Okay, cool. But all right, you've been feeding me beef jerky and turkey jerky, and, you know, this stuff is dry. I need something to drink. I've already was thirsty when I came here. Like, what's going on? All right, here goes some ostrich t jerky. Just try to. By the time you get to the fifth or sixth animal, I'm shoving the shit in your face and I'm trying to beat you with it. I'm trying to choke, suffocate you with the damn jerky. Why? Because I'm dying of thirst. I don't care if you got variations of this. I specifically am in need of this. Once you supply me like with this, then the jerky can, can become more accommodating. Then it can become enjoyable. But there's been too much of a drought of AAA games. That's why people are at the door knocking for what? AAA games. That's why they're doing it. See, y'all missed the whole point. It's not about that's all we want. We're not getting it at all. So the more you're not getting something that you feel like you're in need of, the more you're going to be complaining about it. And Microsoft refuses to talk about those AAA games in the fashion that is satisfactory to their gamer base. So because of that, that's why they're always in a negative light a lot of times that we see on social media. But despite all that, to Sony's 10, 16 billion, they still made 10 billion. It's not like they made 2 billion. It's not like they only made five. To Sony's 16 billion, they made two, 10 billion. A lot off of just software and services. So a lot, a lot of that money came in without all the extra overhead that Sony experienced. Do you understand? So I'd love to see what that, what they call revenue in the black is. Meaning after you ad adjusted for overhead, because a lot of that money is based off of what Sony sold off of hardware. Microsoft didn't sell that much hardware. But they're, they're doing a lot of services and you can get your games on PC and all the other stuff. I like to see how much that, that overhead is when you make the adjustment costs and, and what the revenue in the block is. So. Devin got the box says PS5 pushed back Laugh my confirm, laugh my ass off. Is that is that a real article? Or are you just joking? You mean they pushed back from 2020? Tell me you just joking. Is that just a joke? PlayStation 5. Hey, you got me looking. I'm looking at an article that said that the PlayStation 5 is going to release February 12th. <laughs> That's bullshit. Okay, no, Dev Devin, Devin must be joking. Oh, okay. Um, okay. When I said nobody wanted to call in, here's what I'll do. I'm a fair-minded guy. You guys did a great job, Cold Blood, on the back of Cold Blood Sensei, as always. <laughs> Y'all did a great job. Well, he did a great job in, in continuing to, to add to the free messaging app. So what I'm going to do is I'll leave the phone lines open for next week. I'm going to be doing a stadium. I cold blood since I know you're not. I know you're not interested. But for those of you that are interested, uh, there's some big things coming to stadia. And then there's some big grumblings coming to stadia. Like I really love the stadia community because they don't hold back. Big ups to my homie Duncan, one to escape. And he's part of StadiaSource.com. If y'all want real information on Stadia, like just to gauge, like again, even if you're not even interested, but just to gauge what's really going on and, and, and see that the community is active, go to StadiaSource.com. You can also go to ShareStadia.com. Share your thoughts. They do a lot of like community um, fed posts and stuff like that. Uh, both of those are great places to go. Um, but I'm going to tell you, people like Duncan, they ain't sitting back and just saying, oh, Stadia's fantastic. They're, they're, they're giving Stadia that business. 
Why ain't you doing this? Why ain't you doing it? Why ain't you doing that? Why ain't you doing this? You know, they're telling the good and the bad. And so in lieu of that, we got some bad stuff. Like the communication is, is, is horrendous. And then the, the non shorty of the 2020 games is not great. However, we got some good news too. If you're, you know, if you have a platform or you're interested in the platform, we got some, some shortified reassurances that stadium is not going anywhere. No time soon. It's not. It's just that the bad news might be that their true plan is just a slow drip into an entry into the big stage. Like they're just going to be existing. They're going to be here. They're going to be available, but they're not going to be a one V one match against the others for a few years. Um, possibly that's unless they surprise us again, like the, how they did at the end of December, but check me out. I'm going to be doing the stadium stream connect podcast tomorrow on the stadium dosage platform. And as always, I'm going to be streaming games. I'm streaming them via stadia. You know what I'm saying? Don't hate, don't hate like raging. I told you it was buttery smooth. Um, cold blood says when stadia exclusives are not family friendly <laughs> BS that I might be interested. Um, yeah, it's going to be, a, it, you know what? You might get Baldur's Gate at 2021. You might. We'll see. But to Cold Blood Sensei's point, yeah, they stay stay there right now. It's offering is for a fraction of the price and a better performance, we can give you access to games that are old. <laughs> that's the offer. And that's okay because only the enthusiasts were expected to pick up Stadia right now. But once they go full retail, that's when all the features will be off. That's cool. But again, all those features don't mean anything if you don't have the games to go with them. And we're not sure. Like, I'm going to talk about this tomorrow. I want to make this a um, Stadia Park. I'm going to say this and I'll close out. The biggest thing that could have put Stadia on the stratosphere for everybody to see is for them to release with the free tier come April. Now I would have waited till April or, or March to come out with the free tier a week or two before cyberpunk 2077 and have cyberpunk 2077 release the same day or no more than two weeks before or after everywhere else. And if you are going to have cyberpunk 2077 release after everyone else, then let's give it to them at a discount. Let's have Cyberpunk 2077. I will go all out and make it $39.99 for, you make it $39.99 for the free version and make it $29.99 for the pro members. If they can do something like that, they'll be fantastic. Uh, Cold Blood Sensei said, oh, hold on. Did you, you talking about will Phil play job box like a fiddle? Oh, no. Gun to the head, God of War or Halo. What's it going to be? Oh, um, I don't care about it. I don't care for it. That's an easy one. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, you know me. I play God of War to the finish. Check out my YouTube channel. I don't care about Halo, so that's an easy one. I never liked Halo until Halo 3. The second half of Halo 3, I loved it. I was like, wow. I liked um, Halo ODST. I like Halo Reach. Halo 4, yeah, never really. Halo 4 and 5, I never like really got into. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a big Halo gamer. I was one of those Xbox guys that wasn't there for Halo. I was there because um, I liked the, the second party games, the Jade Empires, the Armed and Dangerouses, the Quake 4s. The praise, you know what I'm saying? The Bioshocks, right? The Mass Effects. That's why I was there because of the collab. Because um, Microsoft were masters at collaborating with other talented studios and coming up with some fire products. And all that's out the window. They're not producing anything. They're not curating anything with anybody. So. He says, point proven, no one but hardcore Halo fans still want that shit. Yeah, I mean, yeah. No, if they but that's if they make it fire. If they if they if they make it fire, it could change my mind. I I I love shooters, but 
It's just, I'm not that interested in Halo. Uh, Pyromatic said, you play Quake 4 console? Jeez, I feel... <laughs> hey, I didn't know any better. Pyro, I didn't know any better. My brother had... He had it on PC. We only had one PC, though. We, weren't, we, we were oozing everywhere else except there. We only had one powerful PC, and he owned it. He built that shit up. And he built it up on his own, and he owned that. I couldn't touch the PC because he was always on it. Or... You know, nah, yeah, if he wasn't playing games with me, he was always on the PC. So I couldn't, I couldn't get to it, but he played Quake 4 on PC. He played Quake 4 and played, uh, what do you call that? Um, oh shoot. What is Doom? Doom? Was it Doom 3 with the flashlight? You were in the dark and one person had to have the flashlight and the other person had a gun. Yeah, he played that all the time. And then we got it for Xbox and we, oh man, we had a great time with that game on Xbox, but yeah. I didn't know any better, but I think Quake 4 was 60, was it 60 frames on 360? I think it was 60 frames on 360. Yeah, yeah, I love, hey, yo, that Quake 4 was sick. Quake 4 had 50 levels. That Quake, that, that's the type of stuff that I missed from Xbox. That make, man, those were some of the, hey, bro, the Xbox 360, those were some great gaming years, man. I'm telling you. And it made, like I said, I was working 12, 13, 14 hour days. Job on the line, brother, job on the line. And I did it like it was nothing, be all because of that 360. Yeah, I don't, I, 343, I can't, I haven't played their stuff a long time, Cold Blood Sensei, to even be concerned. Cold Blood Sensei says, when was the last time Halo was good? Reach, right? Everything under 343 was dog shit. Yeah, I'm, 343 doesn't interest me. They're, they're like cookie cutter. They're, they're, they're conveyor belt holders. Their job specifically was to just keep the biggest franchise pumping out as far as video games are concerned. So, I, I mean, I, enough, I, I've tried Halo 4, tried Halo 5. I was like, oh, this is cool. This is okay. Never never was knocked out my socks. Devin Got the Box says, that's BS. Halo is known everywhere. If it is good, it will blow up. Um, I think if it's good, it'll blow up. It'll blow up, and then we'll see if it gets back to legendary status. I mean, even when it is bad, it does, you know, it, it does some some numbers. It's nowhere where it, and then we got to understand too, every seven years, a new technical generation is made. So even though a lot of us grew up or a lot of us had focal years during the Halo era, seven years later, where Halo really didn't make a scratch or a dent in the gaming community, it's got a war. It's last of us that people remember. They don't care about it. And then Call of Duty, they don't care about Halo like how they used to. They just know that they're supposed to care about Halo. You ever had that feeling where the old people tell you, you're supposed to like this. You're supposed to like that. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> that's what Halo's starting to be like. And that's because they gave it to the conveyor belt team. The conveyor belt team is 343. 343 really has to shine right now, brother. Hey, Devin, they got to knock this out the park. Halo Infinite is the most important game in Xbox's history. If they don't kill it with Halo 3, I don't know. I don't know. All right, folks, we're getting close to the, we're at the two hour and 22 minute mark. So before y'all start laughing at me and start making fun of me, we're going to close this out. But with that said, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Thank you so much. This is fun. And again, I will be doing a podcast tomorrow, Stream Connect podcast. We'll be talking about Stream, uh, Stadia Stream Connect podcast. And then there's going to be videos. I'm going to have new content and stuff like that. And then I'll be doing some game streams as well. So with that being said, and I think we're going to be doing, um, I'm not 100% sure. Got to check with the producers. But I think we're going to be doing Best Damn Podcast, for the first one for 2020. I think we're going to be doing that tonight on Next Gen 720's channel. So definitely check him out for more details on that. And with that being said, you all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.